So we just released Visual Studio 2022 uh, 17.13 preview one. Okay, so this is the, the first preview of the next update to Visual Studio. So let's take a look at what's inside. So I'm here at the um, release notes and uh, let's go through it because there's some really cool things here. So first of all, we have a way for you to set the default file encoding. Uh, this is something that people have been asking for for a long time. Um, so you can say, hey, I always want my files to be saved as a UTF-8 without a bomb, a byte order mark, or always want in whatever code page you might uh, like. So that's really, really nice. It's finally here. Um, so go try that out. Um, another uh, long-standing uh, request from our users is that the bottom margin under the editor can get pretty crowded with a bunch of things. And so what we're doing now is to give you a way to move the scroll bar part of that margin to automatically sit on top when there is not that much space. Um, let's say if your window is a little smaller or there's a bunch of stuff going on. And so that that gives you some some uh, that space back. And uh, it's just a really nice little detail that makes it a lot less cluttered down there under the editor. Another nice thing for the editor is the uh, word wrap indentation. So you can now decide whether or not you want the the um, you know the, whenever a, a line has been wrapped to several lines if you want that indented or not. Um, so that's a, a setting that you can you know, do. Let me actually zoom in here a little bit. I think that's probably better, easier to read. Um, Here's another one, navigate to recent files in code search. So if you like search for code, like control T to open the code search, it will automatically list before you start typing anything in to search for something specific, it will list you the recent files that you either navigated to in, uh, in code search earlier or that you just opened uh, in the IDE and, you know, using some other mechanisms. So basically, uh, it just gives you a quick access to those kind of recently opened files. So that's another feature request that finally made it in. When it comes to Copilot, um, we have some real cool stuff for the feature search. So that's the Control Q or Control Shift P, the command palette. Um, it will uh, allow you to search for anything that you want. And um, if you, there's something you can't find or you're using different maybe words than what Visual Studio, the feature is called in Visual Studio, you can ask Copilot and Copilot is able to figure out uh, probably exactly what you mean and, and help you out from that point on. So a nice little addition uh, so that you don't get stuck, uh, don't know the right uh, names that Visual Studio is using and so on. We also have some new shortcuts in the Copilot chat. Um, so that makes it a little bit easier to do keyboard navigation. Uh, Natural language, this is a nice one. So um, the copilot inline chat and the slash commands uh, can now do these expansions into natural language. So it's just, it's just it feels more natural. It's, it's a better experience basically. So a nice little um, update. Another thing that copilot will help us with is that when we're dealing with like a multi-threaded application, maybe you're using async await uh, in C-sharp, um, if you look at the parallel stacks window that shows you all the different threads you've got going on, it can be hard to know exactly what of which of these threads are doing what type of work. So now uh, Copilot will give you a little summary of each of these. If you look here at the top, um, you can see it gives you like a kind of a title or a summary of what this thread is doing. And so that's actually really, really helpful to sort out what, what your app is doing in this multi-threaded um, world. So some really nice uh, updates to Copilot as well. When it comes to uh, the debugging and diagnostics, you now get some new uh, way to do a targeted instrumentation for native code. So if you're like a C++ developer, for instance, you now have um, um, better support in the profiler. And a really cool one and a fan favorite here is that we now have syntax highlighting for the uh, um, iEnumerable visualizer. So when you're debugging and um, you know you hover the mouse over a link query or a collection, you can now 
you know, type in with IntelliSense and now also syntax highlighting um, a query to see the list filtered. So this is super, super cool for uh, debugging uh, collections. For Git tooling, we now have the ability to add comments to our pull requests. And um, that's just a really, really nice thing that we can stay inside Visual Studio. We don't have to go to GitHub or um, Azure DevOps to add our comments, but we can do it straight from the IDE. You can see there's a little icon that shows up. You can click it and type in your comment. And you can do that. If it's GitHub, I think it's like a, you know three lines before or after any uh, change in the file. And if it's uh, Azure DevOps, I think it's you can write a comment at any place in the file uh, that contains changes. So it, it depends on the platform, like has different capabilities and the tooling in Visual Studio reflects that. So that's really, really cool. So for the IDE, we also have a bunch of uh, other feature requests here uh, finally implemented. One of them is the issue we've had for a long time when you change themes. Let's say you go from dark theme to light theme. Uh, and you've made changes to the font size. Now, changing themes resets the font size again. And so that's really, really annoying, but that's been solved. We removed the font information out of the kind of the, the theming, so they're no longer affected by that. So if you said uh, a big font size in the dark theme, well, that same font size now applies even after you change the theme. So uh, yeah, that's a really nice one. Uh, we got some um, GitHub. This is like for people that are like just installing Visual Studio for the first time. We allow you to like uh, sign into kind of GitHub uh, right away, which is really nice. Um, so you can do that from, from basically the installer instead of doing it after the fact. And you can do multiple GitHub accounts as well. So you can have, you might work on different teams or if you're a consultant, maybe you have your personal GitHub account or you have for each of your clients. And so you can end up with a lot and you have to like sign out of GitHub and back in inside Visual Studio to make it work with every of all these different repos that you might be using. But that has now been solved. You can have multiple GitHub accounts associated and logged into at the same time in Visual Studio. So that will be like a seamless experience, um, finally. Um, another one, people have been asking for uh, a markdown uh, item template. So you can say, you know, add new item markdown file. So we added that to make that super easy for people that prefer that uh, way of adding files. Uh, so a small thing, but but really nice for people that, that wanted it. So that's great. For the cloud stuff, we got some uh, Aspire and Azure Functions update as well. So Azure Functions can now use .NET Aspire, which is great uh, to integrate um, serverless technology into .NET Aspire. And you can see you got full UI support here inside Visual Studio for doing that. Uh, Docker launch configuration, that's also really nice. Um, so basically working with Docker has been updated um, both with launch configuration and Docker Compose scaling as well. And so, um, tooling inside Visual Studio for working with Docker now has those two things. And they were also feature requests. Uh, so, you know, keep, keep your feature re requests coming. As you can see here, there's a theme that we're actually delivering a lot on this. And again, we go into the web and to Razor and being able to extract, uh, you know, select any parts of your HTML or whatever Razor code and extract that into a Razor component that's now available as well. You can do that. Here's a screenshot of what that looks like. It's through the light bulb. Sorry, I think I said right click. You don't right click it. You have the light bulb. So control dot um, to expand the light bulb and uh, extract to component. Um, there's also been some issues with uh, formatting when you copy from, maybe you copy a, a piece of code, racer code from Stack Overflow and you paste it into Visual Studio and the formatting gets kind of weird. Well, you can disable that so that Visual Studio no longer tries to format code when you paste it into Racer. Um, so those were the high level features. Of course, there's a bunch of bug fixes and a lot of small things as well. But these are the main highlights that we got for this very first preview. So I really hope that you uh, try it out, install the first preview. Let us know what you think. What's your favorite feature? Write it in the comments below. And um, if you want more of this type of content here, 
please uh, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Um, thank you.